Hello, my name is Nicola Corzine, and I'm the founding executive director of the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. We're a nonprofit committed to access and equity in the field of entrepreneurship by providing free classes, resources, and mentorship for every founder, wherever they are, and whatever their dreams. And maybe that's a good place to start for a moment, dreams. First, let me say we're so glad that you're here exploring your Capital Pathway needs today for this launch of our very first Capital Pathway Starting Line Toolkit. Your dreams as a founder often may feel pressured and tensioned by the idea of raising capital. And today we hope to dispel a little bit of that and give you a bit of a compass as to how to reorient capital in support of you as a business leader and as a founder doing so much for all of us. Collective intelligence from our programs, our research, and our community has informed this experience that you're about to see for yourself from our team in just a few minutes. It's aimed to align your vision as a leader to capital options that are best suited for your business. We hope you're gonna use this toolkit to anchor to your vision and crystallize the ultimate success for you as a business leader. Identify the capital types that are best suited for your leadership needs and hopefully prioritize learning goals for follow-on capital exploration. So let's get started with what is a capital pathway. It's a comprehensive way of looking at how you're bringing money into your company, not just for the short term, but what comes before and after. You can think of a capital pathway as a preview as to how capital models work or don't work to helping you achieve your business vision. This is therefore an invitation for you as a founder and business owner to connect your biggest dream for your business and begin pursuing capital from that critical perspective, letting your needs and your values as a founder drive your own capital exploration. Each capital type based on the structure informs business conditions like the pace of growth, your ownership autonomy, and what capital may or may not follow. This interactive set of exercises will help you align your needs as a leader to business conditions that inform capital options for further exploration. So here's what's included in the toolkit that we hope you'll download today. First, interactive exercises that our team and women business owners are going to start to explore with you in just a few moments. There's also the starting line capital considerations map, which is customized for your own leadership priorities. There's a glossary of key terms. In capital, there's no single definition for anything. So we've tried to be helpful in making sure that we're not adding to an already confusing environment. And finally, you'll find a good set of resources by capital type to help you begin that deeper exploration in your own capital journey. Coming in June of this year, you're gonna find that we have an even larger set of Capital Pathways workbook which is aimed to match your business model to your capital needs as a leader. And this will help you build your full capital map, both for today and for tomorrow, with transparency and clarity from entrepreneurs and capital providers. So what can you do today? Well, number one, stay with us for the incredible information that's about to follow. Number two, if you haven't already, we really hope that you're going to join our community. And you can do that at thecenter.nasdaq.org. We also hope that you're going to consider joining some of our immersive programs, like our Milestone Circles, which is a program designed to help women business owners revitalize their vision for their business, set a critical business milestone, and build an exceptional network of support to help you today and in the future. It has been an incredible honor being in support of each and every one of you for our past eight years. We're inspired by what's to come and we're excited for your future. Thank you. Thank you, Nicola. Welcome again to the SBA Salon Series, Capital Pathways Starting Line. My name is Cami Twiggs-Taylor and I'm the director of the Milestone Circles Program at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. I am joined by my colleague, Dr. Pinar Selick instructional designer at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. At this time, I am thrilled to introduce you to our women founder participants who will be engaging in conversation with us today. First, we have Nakia Mba. Nakia is an army wife 
mom and project manager. She is the founder and CEO of Elegant Women, a strategic consulting company assisting women-owned organizations with improving effectiveness and business process. Nakia is also the principal founder of Core Design and Development. Core specializes in residential and multifamily development, project management, and final cleaning throughout the Southeast. Next, we have Rashima Sunsun. She is the founder of Sunsun, an award-winning e-commerce men's accessory brand and a supply chain veteran with over 15 years of experience. She is also a credentialed vocational educator specializing in business, finance, and design. Rashima enjoys traveling and shares lean tips to make entrepreneurs' lives easier. And finally, we have Tamika Chance. Tamika is a founder and chief executive officer of T12 Technologies. She established her company to assist small and medium organizations with recognizing their potential for modernizing their information technology environments using cloud platforms, automated business processes, and cybersecurity practices to propel their business growth. Her company is known as a managed service provider who implements IT services, support, and staffing for all types of industries. Welcome, ladies. The Capital Pathway Starting Line is a new workbook at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center. This workbook is indeed the starting line, as the title suggests, to help women entrepreneurs define ultimate success for their business, plan accordingly also in the short and medium term against those financial goals, and identify immediate capital pathway opportunities that are fit for their business. Today, Nakia, Rashima, and Tamika will engage in exercises from the Capital Pathways Starting Line Workbook. We invite you, our audience, to participate in these activities along with us. These exercises are designed to help founders begin the work of realigning with their vision and values while gaining clarity on capital goals for their business. At the end of our time together, each of our participating women founders will have created both a business milestone and a learning milestone for the next 12 weeks. So let's get started. Go ahead and take out a sheet of paper and let's do a brain dump. I'm gonna give you about a minute to write down all of the things that keep you up at night. As a busy entrepreneur, I am sure you are holding on to a mounting to-do list of tasks, deadlines, ideas, and dreams. And sometimes it's hard to attach new information while we have a running list of our pressing items swirling in our heads. So let's do a quick brain dump before we move into the learning space. Now, let's ask one of our participants what is keeping you up at night? What kinds of things are on your to-do list? I'm going to ask Nakia. She can share a little bit with us about what are the types of things that are on her to-do list? Nakia? Great. Hello, everyone. Um, what's keeping me up at night currently is how to do more in a condensed amount of time. So I really desire to um, expand and allow people to know what it feels like to have their own home. And I think about you know, day in and day out, how can I do this on a greater scale, you know, in this season? So that's what keeps me up currently. Oh, thank you, Nikki. I'm sure many of our women who are watching can definitely relate. So now that you all have gotten these items out, how does it feel to you? Does it feel freeing, overwhelming, or perhaps something else? Tamika, you just did this brain dump. How does that feel to you? Oh, it feels very relaxing and very uh, releasing is definitely the feeling I get um, after doing this break though. Awesome. And so now let's take, let's go, let's move on. And what would I want you to do in this moment is inventory that to-do list. So we're going to write down any themes that you're seeing. So take a look at that list. Do you see any commonalities, anything that's glaring? Now, once you have identified 
a few things. Let's circle one thing that feels the most critical to you in this moment. I encourage you as you're going through this process to pay close attention to your inner dialogue. So go ahead and write down a few of those themes and then circle the one thing that feels the most critical to you in this moment. So Rashima, did you, would you mind sharing the theme that you came up for you in this moment? Yes, um, the biggest theme for me is uh, marketing. Um, having a, a product owned business, marketing is essential and it helps to build awareness and hopefully increase more partnerships. Um, so overall, the biggest one for me is definitely marketing. Thank you, thank you. So now from here, we've just identified, we did our brain dump, we identified themes. And what you can do at this point is jot down your needs to do, or perhaps your think you needs to do, need to do. So if you don't know what you need to do with this particular theme, that is okay. Just make a list of what you want to find out. All right, so let's move on. So now that we have had our brain dump, we are going to now envision our work. So I wanted to invite all of you to do in this moment is to visualize with us your perfect work day. I want you to not just visualize your perfect work day, but your perfect work day five years in the future. What is your ideal work day five years from now? So feel free to close your eyes and relax and imagine what does that perfect work day look like for you? Take a couple of deep breaths as you are imagining this work day. What are you doing? How does it feel? What images, colors, sensations, or emotions are coming up for you? Continue taking a couple of more deep breaths while you are imagining this perfect work day. Now, when you are ready, open your eyes and hold on to that vision that just came up for you. Now, holding on to that vision, let's shift for a minute and talk about values that were represented in that vision you just imagined. So here on the screen, we have a list of values. Now, I want you to take a moment to review this list of values. This is not a complete list. So please feel free to add any values that are true to you, but are not listed here. So in this moment, as you are reviewing that list, what I would like to invite you to do is identify three values that showed up for you in your work vision. So what are three values that showed up for you during that work vision five years from now. So I'm gonna take a moment so that you can review that list, identify those three values. And now let's go around and hear from Nakia, Rashima and Tamika. Nakia, what were your three values that showed up for you? My top three values are service, authenticity and creativity is I believe that in order for you to have a true sense of fulfillment in life you have to serve others because that's the only way that you're able to really maximize your skills your potentials and your abilities and I believe in authenticity because if I am not my truest self how can I be the best resource 
for someone else. And in addition, creativity, we're all adults, but we were once children. And I believe that the power to dream and really cultivate your future based off those dreams is very important in fulfillment. Yeah, that was beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Rashima, what three values came up for you? Yeah, so the three values that came up for me were uh, authority, creativity, and success. Um, again, as a product-owned business, um, we specialize in luxury bow ties. And so uh, with the three things, authority, creativity, and success, we have to be creative in the products that we offer uh, to ensure that um, our customers engage with them. Uh, also to be an authority in that particular space, um, because you know, if the customers are looking for a particular products such as what we offer, we want to be the authority and the go-to for our customers. And success is, you know, once we achieve all those goals um, with that are within our values and vision, that everything will fall into place and we will continue to grow. Beautiful. Thank you. And Tamika, what about you? Uh, my three top values are accountability, integrity, and selflessness. Um, accountability, absolutely, whether you're in business or not in business, we have to be accountable for what we put out into the world, how we represent ourselves and how we represent our businesses and hold ourselves to a standard uh, to greatness in whatever we do uh, far in that area. Integrity is very, very important. Um, as in your business, you have employees or your partners, you want to be that be very honest and, and have that put that very honest dialogue with all that all those that you come in contact with to be successful either personally or within your business as well. And of course, selflessness is not all about me and it's not all about you. We must maintain some selflessness to grow all together um, to, to achieve our goals. So those are my three values. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And so I encourage you to take these final three values and don't throw them away. Put them somewhere on a mirror, on your computer, or on your phone where you can continue to reflect on how you would like these values to show up in your interactions with your team, customers, or perhaps your partnerships. So now that we have a little more clarity on the future we would like to see for ourselves and our work, let's go back for a minute and reconnect with the reason you started your business in the first place, your why. So for founders, our, your why is the fuel that keeps you going on your most difficult days. And leading with your why not only energizes you as a founder, but it invites stakeholders to understand and connect with your vision more deeply. So now Rashima, Tamika, and Nakia, let's paint a picture with your story. And after you have shared your story, Let's see if we can identify your deeper why. So Rashima, tell us, why did you start this business in the first place? Yes, uh, so why did I start my business? Um, let's see, well, in 2014, um, I was trying to find a gift for one of my brothers who was expecting his first son. And I couldn't find a gift that uh, to help him uh, connect with his son, to celebrate that special moment but also something that can be passed on, right? And so um, I researched, I did some research online, talked to a couple of people to get some insight. And unfortunately, there wasn't a brand that offered what I was looking for. And with my background in design, I decided, well, why not make a uh, father and son bow tie? You know, it's, it's, um, it's something that's timeless, can be passed on, it's something he can teach his son, but also it's something that marks that special moment. And so I started my brand to help a driven men who want to look stylish by providing them options for the clueless, <laughs> allow them to celebrate their first and stylish pieces for special events, but most of all to building relationships and creating memories. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. I felt all of that, just finding an item to be able to mark a special moment, to build memories. It sounds like you believe finding the ideal fashion piece 
that meets one's needs should not be challenging. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. Nakia, there are so many things you could be doing with your time and talent. Now, tell us, why did you start this business? Um, I started Core Design and Development because it's been a dream of mine to build and design homes since about third grade. I always wanted to be an architect, um, travel around to like different countries, uh, building remote villages. It's just always been something in me that just made me want to build. But I saw, um, especially within the last, you know, 10 years, I noticed that uh, people are out here working extremely hard to try to stay ahead, but there are not a lot of opportunities for home ownership. And I really feel that it's essential to have a solid foundation and the ability to dream without restriction because you have a stable place to live. And so the drive is just to be a solution to a problem that I see, um, you know, within this generation and really positioning the next generation to thrive, you know, foundationally. Oh my goodness. So the ability to dream without restriction, to have a solid place to live. Oh my goodness. That was beautiful. So it sounds like your deeper why is that you are doing this work because you believe every person should know how it feels to have a home that is a stable environment and that it's one of the key elements in influencing one's ability to, as you shared, dream without restriction. Beautiful. Mika, how about you? Take us back to the day you decided to move into entrepreneurship. Why did you start this business? Oh, awesome. So I started T12 Technologies because I was really into uh, growing and modernization of information technology systems. And I love to give joy and happiness. And as I started this company, I saw more smiles and more thank thankfulness for bringing in new technologies that solved simple solutions or made life easier for small to medium businesses and, and, and streamline their business processes so they can focus on other things that they needed to do. So my why really is I'm a people pleaser and to see those smiles and joy of people saying, thank you so much, you know, is why I do what I do today. I am grateful for one, as I am not the technology person, that you are doing what you are doing. So I love that you are helping others to solve simple solutions through technology. So it does sound like you believe clients can experience the same joy through their use of modernized technology. Uh, also beautiful and um, and powerful and impactful stories, uh, ladies. Thank you so much for sharing. So let's put this all together and write your vision statement. So for this vision statement, we want to take the actions we are currently taking for our current work and combine it with our why. This vision statement often should feel like it's more, it's often more powerful and relevant when we can anchor it in that why. So Tamika, would you like to go first? Absolutely. My vision statement goes like this. I am Tamika and I implement cloud platforms and other emerging technologies as a managed service provider because I believe I can bring joy to the clients through their use of modernized technologies. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Thank you for doing that work. All right, Rashima, you wanna try? Sure, I'll go ahead. Yes, um, I'm Rashima Sonson, and I create and offer distinctive men's accessory products because I believe finding the ideal fashion piece that meets one's needs shouldn't be challenging. Beautiful, beautiful vision statement. All right, Nakia, let's hear your vision statement. I am Nakia Mba. I want to cultivate an environment to help the next generation thrive. I plan to do that by building high quality yet affordable 
residential and multifamily developments because I truly believe every person should know what it feels like to have a home and that having a stable home environment is one of the key elements in influencing your ability to dream without restriction. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. So now we've just developed this vision statement that is grounded in our why. Let's identify what success looks like for your future. So back to the future. It is five years from now. Consider your responses to these questions and I will, well, I will share momentarily. And as you're hearing these questions, take a moment and breathe, take in and release. And if you want to jot down a couple of notes or phrases, you can, if you would like. All right, so five years from now, what does success look like for you? Go ahead and jot that down. Five years from now, what does success look like for you? All right, here's the next question. Five years from now, how will you know you've been successful as an individual and leader. Five years from now, how will you know you've been successful as an individual and leader? Now, here is our final question. Five years from now, what has happened to you, your family, your business and your community. Five years from now, what has happened to you, your family, your business and your community? All right, now, at this time, I will pass it to my colleague, Pinar, for Capital Path Capital Considerations Mapping. That's the Thank you, Kami. This has been a great journey. Thank you for uh, walking us through your why, your vision statement, and where we are at right now, which is dreaming about the future. So let's talk about capital considerations. Um, so each capital type defines terms, conditions, and follow-up funding that would be uh, that business founders will be looking forward to uh, acquire into the future. So let's explore the fit based on your vision uh, and your uh, vision of success as a leader, as a founder. Uh, your company is most important and um, crucial asset is you. While this won't be the only frame of reference that you will be taking while looking for capital optionalities, this will be a starting point. So let's take a moment and then slow down and look into your business ambitions. If maybe we can start with Nikia. Uh, among the following statements, which one best describes your ambitions for your business in the long term? Um, I aspire to be a corporate business with a large employee base and headquarters with a little dash of a unicorn. <laughs> Great. Great aspirations. How about you, Rishima? Yes, um, I aspire to be a mid-sized business uh, with several employees. Um, as a fashion designer, um, I think it's important just to have a little bit of uniqueness and not to be as big. Um, it also gives a sense of exclusivity. So for me, I think that's a perfect fit for my business. Hey, Tamika. I aspire to be a mid-sized business with several employees uh, with multiple locations and a splash of a unicorn. Um, that's, that would be awesome. <laughs> Great. So think about where you are at the moment and then your vision uh, for the next five years. 
uh, how do you characterize uh, your willingness to grow your business? Uh, how fast do you want to grow your business? And let's start with Timika. I'm slow scaling. I would like to slow scale and, and kind of get it right the first time and um, kind of take some time or some years to grow uh, to my uh, business ambition goal. Great. Nikia? Yes, I'm, um, well, I'm currently bootstrapping, but I'm also desiring to slowly scale because I want it to be solid and you know, efficient and effective the first time around. So I want to really take time and really implement the right processes and systems. Great. Uh, Rashima, how about you? Um, that's a great question. Um, interestingly, I started off bootstrapping and right now I'm slow scaling. Um, I think slow scaling is, is imperative. Uh, with businesses, there are peaks and valleys you learn as you go along. And it's also important to develop um, standard operating procedures just to ensure when you do bring people on, you can scale the right way. And when it's time to fast scale, you already have the foundation set up. You'll have the processes already in place so that you can achieve your goals. And that's um, our current growth velocity. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing the reasoning behind how you are thinking as well. I, I'm sure uh, there are many founders who are watching our uh, session today. I will be relating to what you're experiencing and how you are thinking about uh, your growth. So how about your business succession plan? Um, in your big vision, uh, your dream state, what is the succession plan for your business? Uh, let's start with you, Reshima. Yes. Um, so the succession plan for my business, um, and, and this is a great question. Um, my business is trademarked. Um, I've already included the business in my will many years ago. Um, however, I do hope and wish for my business to be acquired. But if not, I do have uh, risk management protocols in place so that if anything were to happen, it can go to who's ever in my will. So um, overall, that is my business succession plan. Thank you for sharing. Uh, how about you, Nikia? Um, yes, so our business succession plan is actually to pass to our children. Um, I have a two-year-old daughter currently, and the business is entrusted to her um, You know, now. And of course, as we expand our family, we'll also incorporate the other children, but we definitely want to, you know, pass it to the next generation. Thank you for sharing. Tamika? Hi, so my first plan in my succession plan is to um, sell, to sell my business to another uh, business, and I would love it to stay uh, locally, um, but um, I have a daughter. She is in the IT realm, and she thinks that she wants to take over the business, and of course, family will have priority over selling it to another company, so Right now, the plan is to sell, but if our daughter steps up to take it, she gets it. So we'll pass it on through the family. Great, love it. So uh, thinking about your leadership needs and what is important for you, for your business as a founder um, and for your success for your company, what do you need to do, consider or learn related to your capital exploration in the upcoming months, upcoming year. Uh, can you share those with us? And uh, I would um, nominate Rashima. Yes, can you repeat the question one more time? I just wanna make sure that I address it completely. Sure. So recognizing your leadership needs and we are taking the point of view where uh, your needs as a leader uh, for your success for your business is the most important right now. Uh, what do you need to do, consider, or learn related to your capital exploration in the upcoming months, in the upcoming year? Hmm, okay. Um, this is definitely an interesting question. Uh, for me, I would definitely say um, focusing on marketing using my pie strategy and pie is uh, a theory for success you know uh, working on my performance my image and exposure 
Um, but additionally, with the um, performance incorporating uh, AI tools, I, I think that it's important for any and every business um, is crucial, I, I believe, for the, for, for the survival of businesses in this industry. Um, but overall, definitely working on um, my pie. Great. Ikea? Yes, so for for core, um, definitely want to, you know, create uh, sustainable systems. And what I mean by that is, you know, have solid processes in place so that if we're in North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, you know, there's a protocol that everyone knows to follow um, to adequately reflect the company. So really just getting into, um, I guess, creating databases um, and systems and processes of efficiency and also learning more about the land development and acquisition side of development. Tamika? All right, so uh, Pinar, when you ask this question, this is, this is really good. It's kind of two part for me um, when we speak of it from a capital perspective, there are people in technology that I look at for an overall business growth. So as a leader, we need to communicate, which for T12, I would say, is communicate, communicate our mission, our vision and values to our people so they can help get us to our business growth um, goals, strategic goals within the organization uh, through touting a great word of mouth through the company, uh, marketing through our employees and things like that to help with capital growth. But overall for our company, just knowing what our growth goals are and knowing how if we need um, additional capital uh, help, you know, funding, uh, money, different ways you can get capital assistance to help towards our growth goal. Um, so just learning the options and, uh, and um, programs out there that will assist companies to achieve uh, capital goals within the organization. Um, and that, that's kind of how I saw that. I hope I got it right. <laughs> I don't think there is right or wrong answers. Uh, this is really a brainstorming session for all of us. And I can clearly see your goals of like slow, slow growing and building up to it and then planning and then making sure, making sure you have a great foundation and a strong one as well. Um, so before I pass uh, the button uh, to Kemi, what are your capital needs? Let's dive deep into that. Uh, if you are, you did not think about these um, before, that's okay as well. Let's let's do a brainstorming together, and then maybe uh, you can leave the session with a couple of notes for yourself and your for your own learning in the upcoming weeks, upcoming months as well. What capital do you need? to help you achieve business success as you've defined it. Uh, we can start with Nikia. Okay, awesome. Well, uh, one thing about um, CORE, we want to kind of have um, two different sectors. We want to actually acquire land and develop from ground up. And we also want to acquire, you know, properties that may have been abandoned or but are in relatively good condition renovate those and turn them into, you know, housing units. So currently, you know, just based off some properties that, that we're looking at, um, our capital needs are right at around $210,000. And that's acquiring a property that's already, you know, built, um, completing the renovations, paying for the land costs, and all the things that go into those um, renovations. I see that's uh, something that is upfront in your mind. You even have a number that's great. <laughs> great to have a solid number in mind and on a piece of paper. <laughs> How about you, Reshima? Yes, um, see, in regards to uh, capital needs and goals, um, overall for our business, again, we're focused on, on product. Um, having additional tools or resources to help us uh, increased creative and innovative delivery of our products and services is crucial and it's key. Um, in this digital age, um, you know, everyone's on social media and social media, for example, like uh, IG 
is now used as like, in a sense of like a magazine, it's visual. You can shop uh, via IG. And I think uh, having these creative, innovative tools and solutions available for uh, my business is imperative. And to accomplish that, um, our capital goals uh, currently sit at 150,000 um, in regards to um, production, uh, marketing, whether it be uh, visual, um, editorial, or commercials, just to uh, in increase the awareness of our brands and to reach to our customer base, um, and also to incorporate uh, additional AI tools. Um, having a defined creative marketing strategy and the product to match uh, will definitely help us uh, achieve the success and the vision um, for the goal of our business. Great, I can I can see Rishima why marketing is your it's was your uh, on on your paper at the beginning mm -hmm. of this exercises <laughs> when you did the brain dump. Uh, so you have been living and breathing in this uh, challenge for some time. I see. Correct. <laughs> Tamiko, how about you? Uh, yeah, so um, T12 as a service provider, um, you know, versus a product provider, our main capital is people, labor, and, and those resources um, to maintain contracts and requirements. And because we deal in the information technology space, we really have to stay abreast on training and new new needs and new technology. So. Um, our goal within T12 Technologies, uh, we invest in our employees so we have training dollars allocated because the skill sets is what builds up our, our, um, our, our growth within the company is the skill sets and labor that we bring into the company. So we look at increasing our training um, our labor cost and everything exponentially each year. Um, so we have the capabilities to bring on more resources um, to help us grow within the industry. So it's a, so services is a little crazy, um, but we do, we're going back to uh, kind of working re remotely to back in the office. So we actually need um, assets and building space to do some work in um, in expanded areas. So those are those are our biggest capital needs. Great. Thank you all so much for sharing uh, not only your capital needs, but the behind reasoning behind uh, how you are thinking about these needs. That was absolutely very eye opening. Um, and I hope our viewers are also benefiting from this conversation. Thank you so much for all the rich contributions. That being said, I will pass the microphone to Kami to help us carry to the next exercise. Thank you, Pinar. So ladies, what I heard from the last exercise is Nakia, you're looking to acquire land and properties for renovation. And Rashima, you're looking for marketing tools and solutions for your business. And Tamika, you are investing in your employees and also thinking about um, building out a space, um, an office space, now moving back into uh, more of the um, actual working space versus virtual, um, um, as we, many of us, has been in that space. So at this time, let's set our quarter's milestone. So to do this, we want to refer back to your to-do list or perhaps your themes and think about success as you've defined it. So for the next 12 weeks, what is your top priority to take you closer to your big vision? So what's your top priority in these next 12 weeks that's going to move you closer to that big vision? So the first question is, what will be your business milestone? What will be your business milestone in this moment? So Nakia, what will be your business milestone? Um, my business milestone will be definitely um, connecting myself with a team, you know, someone who can incorporate and deliver each part of the project. Because of course, as business owners, we don't do all the designing and building. You want to be knowledgeable in those areas, but you also want to have people who are already efficient, you know, just coming together collectively to carry out the vision. So really just making those meaningful connections um, is my business milestone for the quarter. Thank you. Rashima, what's your business milestone? 
Yes, um, so my business milestone uh, for this quarter um, is again, focusing on marketing. Um, marketing, and again, with using the strategy of PI to support farmers' image and exposure, but also working with individuals to help us achieve that. And what I mean by performance is just gauging um, any data that we may have, whether it may be engagement, um, sales, image and exposure uh, from like articles or uh, presentations that we may do as a business, just to engage with our community and to bring more awareness to our brands, our services, and just things to you know, help all customers along their journey. Thank you for sharing. And Tamika, what's your business milestone for the next 12 weeks? Awesome. My uh, business milestone is to increase our marketing to bring on board a minimum of three small businesses that we can bring the joy of technology to, to see those smiles. So um, yes, definitely increasing uh, who we are so we can in return bring those smiles to small businesses um, in this next quarter. So I'm sure you all know that, and thank you, Tamika. I'm sure you all probably realize with this process, there's some things that we want to learn. So when we think about our learning milestone, what is it that you need to learn in this next quarter? Nakia? Um, so for me, I think a, a key learning milestone is understanding um, land development. So I've been um, you know, taking a, a class here recently with a developer and just learning zoning and ordinances and things, you know, how to know what to build and where to build and how high and wide to build it. And I found it so intriguing that my husband's kind of like, you know, you need to sleep. <laughs> so I'm just like up, you know, looking at things. So I'm really learning the ins and outs of the full development cycle from land acquisition to the actual final build. Rashima, how about you? What is it that you would need to learn? Uh, yes, um, what I believe I would need to learn uh, is definitely increasing my knowledge of different AI tools. Um, you know, AI is no stranger to what we hear in the news, on social media, and the way that customers engage have been shifting. Um, attention spans have been shifting. You know, their needs have been shifting. So just staying abreast of the market needs, um, how people are engaging in AI is definitely something that is uh, growing. Uh, it's, it's a buzzword, um, especially for products and services. And being in the, in the creative space, I had to remain in tune with what's happening within this creative innovative industry and also connecting with people who can help me achieve that as well. Awesome. Tamika, what about you? What is your learning goal? My learning um, goal is to uh, get deeper into building out strategic plans, strategic growth plans. I recently attended a CEO accelerator course that kind of helped um, learn what it means to really have a tuned in strategic growth plan um, for the organization. So that is that is my learning milestone. Awesome. Thank you all. Thank you all for sharing your learning milestone and your business milestone. So as we close, how do you feel? How do you feel? You just, we went through our values, our why, and we started talking about capital goals and you've identified areas that you want to um, dig into as well as what that five-year future will look like and um, for you and for your business. So I would love to go around before we end our time today and invite final thoughts. How are you feeling about this business and learning milestone? So Nakia, what about you? Well, I feel excited. Um, and I, you know, just want to in, encourage, you know, anyone who watches this or listens to this at a later date to just um, remember your dream, um, stay clear. And what I mean by clear, clarity leads to confidence. I really believe that as you are clear in your goals and what you desire to do, it increases your confidence and the confidence increases consistency. So just be mindful that your dreams are possible and with a plan and with time and resources, you can accomplish anything. So those will be my final thoughts. Well said. Rashima, what about you? Yes, um, so I definitely echo what Nakia has to say. Um, uh, 
having a plan, making sure that it's clear. But also, I am a, a big advocate on the marketing term called KISS, keep it simple, um, and also keeping things lean, um, which is also keeping things simple. I think when you, as an entrepreneur, as a founder, um, you know, life happens, things get complicated, but if you keep things simple, make a plan, stick to like your top three goals for either the, the year or whatever it may be. Um, I think just keeping things simple will help you stay focused to achieve what you want to achieve and what you need to achieve, not just for your business, but before yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself and also keep things simple, then, you know, your business may suffer. So take the time, keep things simple and keep it lean. Thank you. We believe in self-care. <laughs> All right. And Tamika. Uh, yeah. So just wise words from the, these, these beautiful women. Uh, one, I just want to add that um, one, one mantra that keeps me going is we need to focus on working on our company and not working in our company. Um, we will never grow if we have to do everything. So I, I would leave the words that at some point in time, you need to get out in the weeds and work on your company. Um, leave other things to people that you trust to get things done. So those are my um, departing words. Remember, work on your company and not in your company. Definitely words of wisdom. Oh, Nakia, Rashima, Tamika, thank you so much for sharing your why, vision, and milestones with us today. We wish you all the best on your entrepreneurial journey. And to our audience, we appreciate you for joining us and hope you were inspired by this conversation. We will be sharing more information soon on the Capital Pathways Workbook. In the meantime, we encourage you to continue the dialogue with your team and other women founders around you, helping to shape conversations about your capital needs. For more information about the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center and to take advantage of our free resources, visit our website at www.thecenter.nasdaq.org. There you will find information on the Milestone Circles Program, a 12-week program designed to help women entrepreneurs gain focus and clarity to accelerate their business through facilitated coaching, along with peer and mentor support. Mentor Makers, our mentor matching platform just for entrepreneurs. And upcoming classes, live webinar events, and our YouTube channel, and so much more. Thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you soon.